Hey, welcome back to Dogtography. It's almost Halloween, and if you're anything like me, you've probably already purchased your dog's Halloween costume. Today, I'm gonna to take you behind the scenes of a photo shoot that I'm doing with some basic props, costume, and a few things, and I'm sure you can guess what we're doing today. I'm gonna to take you behind the scenes so that you can see how I would do a simple photo shoot, both with my cell phone and with my professional camera. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Andrea Fleury, professional dog photographer, and I'm here to help you create more moments with your dog and capture better memories. Today, we're gonna to do this little Halloween shoot that I kind of had in my mind for quite a while. And really, I'm a big Pennywise fan, and I saw this costume at the Spirit Halloween store, and I had to get it. I've modified it slightly for Asher, but we also have a raincoat, because my assistant is going to be helping out in some images today, and some simple balloons. Nothing fancy, well, in a tunnel, so the location is important. We're gonna try and recreate the movie poster. It's just kind of what I see in my mind. But I will mention that I haven't had this costume on Asher before, and I do wanna say that I think it's very important that if you get a Halloween costume for your dog, that you try the costume on the dog many times before you actually go out and do a photo shoot and you have like an expectation in your mind. You wanna try and keep this low stress as much as possible. Asher's kind of used to going with the flow with my ideas, but if your dog is in any way not comfortable wearing something, you might wanna condition them uh, positively beforehand. Okay, let's get started. Ready? Are you ready? Have yeah. Okay, now turn Asher just a little bit. I'm gonna have you stand here, and I'm gonna have you stand kind of like this, yeah. where I can see a bit of the side of you, not just the back of you. Yep. Okay, um, stay there. Turn just a tiny bit more towards me. Yep. Oh! <laughs> Sit! He's laying down, that's super cute. And catch it! So that's a wrap at the tunnel. Asher did amazing. I can't believe it, he did so good. I was only actually able to get pictures with this camera here at this location because my cell phone was recording some of the video footage you just watched. <laughs> so I couldn't use both at the same time. But I think we're gonna try going to another location and I'll see what I can get with my cell phone there. Very happy with everything we got here. So let's go try somewhere else. Hey, welcome to Dogtography headquarters. We didn't make it to the other location I had in mind and I wanted to tell you why because I think it's really interesting and to, you know, learn from this process as I'm learning from it too. Now, I have to say, I don't often dress my dog up in clothing. In fact, I never have before. It's just not something that I choose to do with him. So he wasn't used to it, as I mentioned uh, earlier um, when we were there at the tunnel. I was actually very surprised that he kept that costume on as long as he did. He didn't seem to even really notice it. But as we were packing up the camera equipment and we were getting ready to go, um, you could just tell that he had had enough. And I definitely am not into stressing out my dog and forcing him to do things when he's kind of reached that point where he's had enough and he was tired. And I just thought it was in the best interest for us to all just go home. I had captured what I went there to take really anyway, so I was very satisfied. In fact, I was absolutely like blown away by the whole experience and what he did. But anyway, I wanted to share with you my top three tips on how to 
orchestrate a successful Halloween shoot with your dog. Number one, try on the costume ahead of time. Not you, not talking about you, I'm talking about your dog. Get your dog to try on their costume ahead of time. Give them lots of praise, lots of treats, lots of high value rewards. Make it seem like it's the most amazing thing in the world to try this costume on. And you know, do it slowly, take it in stages. They don't rush it. You know your dog better than, than I do, so you do what you feel is right. But my best advice would be to make sure that they have worn it at least once or twice and you get to see how they react to it before you have an expectation of like a photo shoot and things that you're actually wanting to get done. Tip number two, plan out your location ahead of time. So I picked out that tunnel thinking it was gonna be amazing and it was the perfect spot, which it was visually but it was very busy. There was people coming and going through the entire time. It was stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. And I hadn't factored that into the equation. I, when you're photographing animals, you're kind of like in the moment anyway, like you're just looking for those split seconds. But when there's like a bike blasting up behind you and those, like nobody was caring that we were doing a photo shoot, nobody gave a crap that we were sitting there trying to take pictures. Um, so yeah, I mean that added another layer of stress and distraction that I didn't really plan for. So there's that. Plan out your location and know where you're gonna go. Tip number three, keep it short and sweet. Have a picture in your mind of what you think you would like to achieve. Try and do that, end it, and then get on with it. The more you drag it out and you have your dog do things over and over or this way or that way, the more it's just kind of causing them stress and the more that you're just kind of prolonging it for what, the benefit of a couple like different angles and different shots, like just do it quickly. Maybe set yourself up for 10 minutes of shooting if you think your dog is capable of doing that and just do it and then end it and then move on and then go to the next stage, which is editing. So I've just loaded all of the images onto my computer and I thought I would go through a few of them with you so I can share with you what I like about them, what I don't like about them so that you can kind of keep these tips in mind for when you're doing your shoot. Okay, so here we are. I wanted to show you some of the pictures. Now these are quite the final, final edits, but you'll get the idea. So we'll start with number one here. This one I really love of Asher standing here with his balloons. Um, the final edit, what I envision is uh, removing obviously Ashlyn, my niece, and these lights here on the corner and this light that I find really distracting right in the middle. Um, and then uh, I think that's about it. I, I like this image. I don't mind the angle of it, but it wasn't really exactly in my mind what I saw creating, but I mean, it's okay as an image on its own. I did take a bunch of pictures like this, which is just of like different background things themselves so that I can do what's called a composite uh, in Photoshop. And that essentially is just blending one image into the next. And I'm gonna show you in a second where I used those balloons. Um, this is another image that I took that I thought was kind of okay. He wasn't panting in this picture, which I thought was nice to see that his mouth, like when his mouth is closed, he kind of had a bit more of a serious look to him. Whereas I find when he is panting and his mouth is open, he looks like he's smiling, which didn't really fit the whole like clown thing. But I mean, asking a dog not to pant is pretty much impossible. So you just gotta, again, you just gotta roll with it. Um, here's another like horizontal shot. It's um, from a bit of a different angle. You can see the top of the tunnel isn't in there. He's a bit more pronounced, a little bigger in the frame. Um, I don't mind this one, but here is a more artistic edit that I wanted to show you. So this is the, actually that's not even the original. That's the original raw file right there. This is the Lightroom edits that I did to it. Now the next image I'm gonna show you is my final Photoshop edits, making him really like pennywised out here with the makeup on his face, which I drew in in Photoshop. And then I added a layer of mist in the background because I really wanted it to have that like sewer kind of feel and vibe to it. And I darkened the things that I didn't want uh, 
you know, catching people's eye. And then again, these balloons here, as you can see, the original um, only had that one balloon at the top, which I felt was very distracting. That was where my eye went. I wanted to kind of even the balloons out. So I took balloons from this image and I cut them out and I put them in behind him. And I also took balloons from another image and same thing, I kind of layered them behind him. That's obviously a very advanced, more advanced uh, Photoshop technique, not something that everybody would do, but I'm just, again, showing you kind of the possibilities of, you know, I saw something in my head and I wanted to go out and recreate it. And that is this image here for sure. Now, I really love these ones with Georgie in them because to me, the movie poster, had Georgie and the raincoat and the paper boat like it's just like that is Pennywise and it the movie it um so I don't mind this one here where it's kind of like just a bottom shot of Georgie and uh Pennywise sitting beside Georgie and then this one I really love the upward angle so I'm my camera is pretty much on the on the ground here and I've tilted it up using a very wide lens. So if you're using a cell phone and you're wanting to make your dog more predominant in the picture, you're wanting them to look like they have a bit more of authority, you're, and you're trying to take a picture of them in this giant space, which is like this tunnel, the best way to kind of compress it all and to do that, I think, is to use a wide angle lens and to shoot up. So it's making the dog appear almost bigger than they are. And uh, we all know that a dog is shorter than a person. So of course he's smaller than um, Georgie and that makes sense to the eye. So I like that. Um, what I would do further with this image is just kind of remove this highlight behind his head and I would maybe add a few more balloons. Here was another take, just kind of bringing Georgie down a little bit. This is still a really low angle. You can see it's got the ceiling of the tunnel in it here, which is a little bit different as well. Uh, the balloons totally didn't get into the frame. So I would maybe if I could move the balloons over and just be a bit more mindful of the, the props kind of in the image. I would also like to see this boat more too. So that's being covered up by your boots. So again, just be really mindful of what's kind of going on in your background and where your props are and just making sure that they're visible and just trying not to rush. This last image here is uh, probably one of my favorites as well. You can see that Georgie is quite a bit back behind the dog. And I did that on purpose because I wanted Georgie to kind of be a little bit more faded out in the background. And you can see that the, the jacket and everything is soft. It's not sharp. So it's not competing for attention with the dog and, and his costume. So I wanted that to kind of stand out a bit more. Now I, I maybe in future would have like in hindsight, I guess would have moved Asher over a little bit or had Georgie move over just a tiny bit. Um, but I do like how Georgie is blocking some of this light coming in from the tunnel. So kind of hiding that again, I would edit this light here off the top and I would add in some more balloons. But anyway, so there's kind of the, the set of images and I'm really super duper happy with them, especially with this, my final edit of Asher as Pennywise. I love it. Hope you enjoyed them. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It certainly was a ton of fun to record for you. Now I have an assignment. Go and do your Halloween photo shoot with your dog. I want you to upload a picture on Instagram or Facebook and tag me at dogtography.ca. I want to see what you're creating and I want to be able to share it um, on my social media too and brag all about your amazing creative images. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. If you love tips and tricks like this, join me every Saturday morning here. I upload fresh new videos so that you can start your weekend off with your pup with something new and fun to do. Take care and happy Halloween. Bye for now.